A warm greeting. Today is Saturday, August 19, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. At the time of recording this video, it's 11 in the morning in the Eastern Caribbean region, where we are closely monitoring what is now Invest 90. This is the area of low pressure that we've been tracking for several days and we're discussing its potential arrival in the Caribbean during this weekend. Furthermore, in this image, we can observe the circulation associated with Invest 99, which appears quite organized. However, the National Hurricane Center has decreased the probability of development over the next few days as it moves northwestward. Debatably, this system looks quite organized, and some of us even thought it might have become a tropical depression at some point. Nevertheless, atmospheric conditions will lead to its weakening soon. The situation is a bit different regarding Invest 90. Satellite images and observations in the Lesser Antilles suggest that this disturbance is becoming more organized during the morning today. Additionally, at 8 in the morning, the National Hurricane Center increased the development probability to 40% as it moves over the waters of the Caribbean Sea, passing south of Puerto Rico and likely affecting the Dominican Republic and Haiti. When we zoom in on the visible satellite image, we can see that the circulation has become somewhat better organized in the last few hours. Moreover, it's generating strong thunderstorms. However, it seems that, for the moment, it still doesn't meet the minimum requirements to be considered a tropical depression. This morning, heavy showers and gusts of wind up to 40 miles per hour have been reported on the island of Barbados. This bad weather will continue to affect a large part of the Lesser Antilles during today and Sunday morning. On Barbados Doppler radar image, we can also observe some kind of rotation currently located just south of the island. We also see the development of some outer bands. These are signs of some cyclonic organization, which is why I am closely monitoring the bulletins from the National Hurricane Center and the afternoon model runs. At the time of recording this video, it's 11 in the morning, so I haven't had the chance to see the afternoon model runs yet, but I understand that there shouldn't be significant changes. It is projected that this disturbance could become a tropical depression south of Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic, possibly crossing over Haiti and the Dominican Republic between Tuesday and Wednesday. Another indication that the circulation is more defined this morning is the observations on different islands. We can see that around 10 in the morning, when the low pressure was in this area near Barbados, we had winds from the northeast and Dominica from the north. This suggests that the northwest quadrant is quite well defined. Furthermore, notice that some of the southernmost islands have calm winds, suggesting that the trade winds are being counteracted, possibly due to an attempt to close this circulation. The Barbados airport recorded a minimum barometric pressure of 1,006 millibars. The low pressure is currently holding strong with some signs of development but it still cannot be considered a tropical depression. Now, what will be happening over the next few days as it moves northwestward? Well, be aware that the sea surface temperatures in this area are very warm, which is why we are keeping a close eye on the evolution of this potential future cyclone. However, remember that the Eastern Caribbean region is an area where these types of disturbances often struggle to close their circulation. Conditions will only be marginally favorable for the formation of a tropical depression or tropical storm during this weekend and between Monday and Tuesday. This is precisely why meteorological models continue to show a somewhat complicated scenario. For example, the GFS model, while not developing a tropical depression over the next few days, shows several areas of maximum vorticity and adverse weather affecting Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic in the coming days. On the other hand, the European model, which has had better performance with this low pressure so far, in its latest run maintains development towards the south of the Dominican Republic, where it has a tropical depression forming on Monday night. Although most of the GFS model ensemble does not develop this disturbance, those that do favor a trajectory over the Dominican Republic. Some even take it over Puerto Rico or even Haiti. This is where the uncertainties lie. For instance, within the European model ensemble, some members strengthen it more than anticipated and have a trajectory more towards the east of the Dominican Republic. If it remains weaker than anticipated, it could move further west over Haiti. It will be crucial to understand where we anticipate it would take that northward turn. We still need to see how much it strengthens over the next 36 hours to determine where the most significant effects might be felt. Something very important, and I usually emphasize this with these types of systems, is that you should remember that the northern part is the most active in terms of rainfall and wind. A trajectory passing just south of Puerto Rico and over the Dominican Republic would bring the heaviest rainfall activity to these areas. Therefore, I ask you not to let your guard down, especially in Puerto Rico, which despite a trajectory south of the island could bring substantial rainfall and a high risk of flooding. In fact, forecasts are indicating that between 9 to 12 inches of rain could fall over the next four days. 
we still need to see exactly which areas will experience these accumulations of rainfall. As an example, the GFS model, with a slightly more easterly trajectory, projects the highest rainfall accumulations over the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, with 8 to 12 inches of rain over a three-day period. If this scenario unfolds, we're talking about a significant flooding event. This is why we continue to be on alert in Puerto Rico. Also, note that the Lesser Antilles could receive an additional 3 to 4 inches of rain over the next 36 hours. Under the European model scenario, which seems to be the most probable at the moment, a slightly more westerly trajectory crossing over the Dominican Republic or Haiti would bring the heaviest rainfall accumulations to the south of Puerto Rico and over much of the Dominican Republic. Similarly, a trajectory just south of the island of Puerto Rico would direct the strongest winds to the north of the circulation. For example, the European model's projection shows gusts of wind ranging from 35 to 40 miles per hour mainly over the waters of the Caribbean Sea. Similarly, the GFS model indicates windy conditions that could affect us over the next few days. Wind shouldn't be a major problem for the Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico. For the Dominican Republic, it will depend on whether the European model's forecast comes true. A trajectory as indicated by the latest run of the model suggests that some tropical storm winds could affect the country on Tuesday. We continue to calmly monitor the progress of Invest 90. It's likely to become a tropical depression over the next few days, although there is still uncertainty about how close it might pass to the island of Puerto Rico. While the GFS model favors a trajectory just over the east of the Dominican Republic, on the other hand, other models maintain a trajectory over Haiti or the Dominican Republic. Between these two scenarios, at the moment, I'm leaning more towards the European model, because it has been the most accurate so far in predicting the behavior of this disturbance. Keep calm, but stay attentive to the bulletins issued by the National Hurricane Center. I will be updating this forecast with a new video during the afternoon or evening hours today. I hope everyone has an excellent day.